Well, good morning, guys. You join me today on this lovely summer's morning, and I've popped down to my local day ticket lake, and the order of the day is really to demonstrate some simple but crucial skills that every carp angler should have in their armory. Feeling the lead down is a very simple but crucial skill that should be part of every carp fisherman's armoury. What it allows you to do is get an understanding of the makeup of the lake bed in which your rig is about to be positioned. By learning to feel the lead down, what you'll be able to do is tell whether your rig is landed on gravel, soft silt or weed. I'm sure for a lot of you, feeling the lead down would be second nature, but for perhaps those of you who are just getting into carp fishing, it certainly should be a skill that you're looking to master. So how exactly do I feel the lead down? Now the first thing I do is make a cast and just as the lead is about to hit the water, I trap the line with my finger on the spool. By trapping the line with my finger, it takes all the bow out the line and puts me in direct contact with the lead. If you're feeling the lead down correctly, you'll feel a slight tension as the lead falls down through the water column. The type of bottom you're most commonly going to be looking for is a hard area as this is where you're going to be able to present a rig most effectively. The sensation you'll feel by landing on this will be a hard fud and a kick back of the rod tip. Another type of lake bed that you're going to commonly find yourself fishing over is silt. Now with silt when you feel the lead down, you're going to get a much softer drop. Depending on the depth of the silt, you still may get a slight fud on the rod, but it's not going to be as aggressive as perhaps landing on a gravel spot. And perhaps something that you may not be looking to always present a rig in is weed. When feeling the lead down in weed, you'll feel next to no sensation as the lead is being cushioned by the weed. With regards to feeling the lead down, there simply isn't a substitute for time spent on the bank. The more you do it, the better you are going to be at feeling the sensations on the lake bed. You'll know the difference between gravel, you'll know the difference between hard silt and soft silt and weed. And at the end of the day, it's going to make you a better angler because you're going to be able to present your rigs more effectively. If you are struggling to fill the lead down, there's a few things you can do to help the situation. Using a braided main line is going to give you a better feeling of the lake bed as the lack of stretch magnifies the sensation. Also, a heavier and dumpier lead is going to transmit sensations more readily through the rod and line. A stiffer rod will also give you a stronger signal as the rod won't be absorbing the impact of the lead on the lake bed. The technique is easier to learn on deeper waters as you can practice the timing of stopping the line and waiting for the sensation of the lead touching the lake bed. Ultimately, feeling the lead down is the best way to gain information about the swim in front of you. With this information, it allows you to present a suitable rig for the lake bed in question. So once you've found an area you're happy with by feeling the lead down, it's now a case of being able to get back to that spot every time. To do this, it's a simple case of putting the line under the line clip on your reel, retrieving the lead and getting your spot on distance sticks ready. So what I do now is take one of the distance sticks, place it in the ground and slide over one side of the measurement tape. It's then a case of taking the measuring tape, stretching it out until it's tight and placing the other distance sticks through the hole. The advantage of using the measuring tape is that it's the same distance every time. That's whether you're using six foot, nine foot, 10 foot, 13 foot rods, at least you know you have a universal measurement. So now what I do is wrap the lead around one of the distance sticks to secure it in place. It's then simply a case of wrapping out the line in a figure of eight motion until you hit the clip, counting the wraps as you do so. A wrap is simply the distance between one distance stick to the other. It's really important to open up the bail arm and feather the line as you're wrapping around the sticks because if you were to use the free spool or the clutch element, you're going to create a serious amount of line twist. After moving your line around the sticks and hitting the clip, it's very important to jot down the number of wraps in which you're fishing. It's then just a case of lifting the rod, winding the line under tension with your hand until you're back tight to the lead. At this point, you can now attach your rig, cast out into the lake, hit the clip, and then fill the lead down as usual. When casting, it's really important to remain consistent in terms of where you're standing and whereabouts you're aiming. This is because a small change can be the difference between landing on the spot or landing in an area where your rig simply won't be presented.
There are a few things you can put into place to help stop tangles. One of the things you can use is rig tubing. Using rig tubing serves three purposes. The first thing is it helps pin your line down around your rig. Secondly, it protects the fish during the fight as it stops the line from rubbing up the flank. And finally, it helps eradicate tangles. It's really important though that your tubing is of longer length than your rig because this prevents the rig from wrapping around the top of the tubing. You can also add a couple of things to your hook. Well, this includes a PVA bag or a piece of rig foam. An additional advantage of using a small PVA bag is it creates a mouthful of bait around your hook bait and prevents your hook point from entering the lake bed. The advantage of using PVA foam is that it will suspend your rig above any debris and as it slowly dissolves, your rig will kick away and present perfectly over the bottom. When the lake bed permits, if you're fishing over a hard bottom, you can also use a stiffer hook link. Now this might be a stiff coated braid or a fluorocarbon hook link, but they would certainly help reduce tangles. And lastly, although it may seem simple, hitting the clip actually kicks your rig away from the lead in flight, and as such, you're gonna have them separated as they're falling through the water column. When it comes to bait application, there are several methods of doing so. You could use a catapult, you could bait up by hand or a throwing stick, but the most accurate way is certainly to use a spod. Having already used the wrapping sticks to mark the distance in which you're fishing, it's just a simple case of wrapping your spod rod up to the same distance. So the advantages of using a spod, you're able to present smaller particles at a longer range and is incredibly accurate. When it comes to spotting, you can often be casting weights in excess of five ounces, so it's important to have the right kit for the job. When spotting, it's useful to use braid as this allows you to cast further distances due to its lower diameter. As you are casting weights in excess of five ounce, it is important to have a shock leader on your spot reel. Basically, a shock leader is a heavier length of braid that absorbs the initial brunt of the cast. To attach a shock leader to the braid on your reel, it's important to use a small knot so there's less friction between the eyes as you cast. I personally like to use a back-to-back -back grinner. When it comes to the length of the shock leader you should have on your reel, I like to have a few turns on the spool and then the length back down the rod to the spigot. Again, due to the heavy weights you will be casting, it's important to have a dedicated rod for the job. Spod rods have a high test curve in order to make casting the heavy weight easier and more comfortable. The dot spot is a perfect tool for the job as it's easy to load with one hand, it's aerodynamic, it opens consistently and it's easy to retrieve. We recommend using a casting glove or a finger stool and the reason for this is because where you're using such a low diameter braid and exerting such a huge amount of pressure on the cast, it can cut into your finger. By using a casting glove or a finger stool, you're simply protecting your finger for any unwanted damage. One last thing when it comes to spotting is to trust your setup. It may feel slightly uncomfortable casting such a huge weight, but trust me, the gear is made for the job, so put everything you have into it and you should be fine. We all know how important location is in carp fishing and there's nothing more frustrating than when you turn up in a swim, find the fish and the fish are just out of your comfortable casting range. Luckily there's a few casting tips that can help you get that extra distance when you really need it. I'm not talking about buying a new set of rods, changing your reels, I'm talking about technique. With a few small changes you can be hitting them extra few yards in seconds. When it comes to the cast, start with a spool of the reel high up the rotor to reduce friction. Furthermore, grip the reel with two fingers either side of the reel stem to give you maximum stability. First of all, let's take a look at the stance when casting. First of all, begin with your weight on the back foot, and as you come through with the cast, you're going to transfer your weight onto your front foot. Now, if you cast with your right hand, your weight should be on your back of your right foot and you come through onto your left. Make sure your front foot is facing the spot. Make sure that the arm that's gripping the butt of the rod is straight and pointing upwards and the arm that is gripping the reel should be high and behind the head. 
This arm position gives you a wider arc and gives you more time to compress the rod. When it comes to the execution of the cast, we want to maximise tip speed. To do this, we use the arm that's gripping the butt of the rod as a pulling force, and the other arm is used as a pivot to create a large arc. Whilst pulling the butt of the rod into your chest, transfer your weight onto the front foot. When aiming the cast, rather than looking directly at the spot, make sure you aim at a 45 degree angle above it. Make sure you continue to aim the rod at a 45 degree angle during the cast, as this creates less friction. It's these small changes in your techniques which can create a huge difference in the end result. If you still find yourself falling just short of the spot, there are still another few things you can put into place to help you cast further. First of all, it's important to match the lead size to the test curve of rod you're using. Today I'm using a three and a half pound test curve rod, so ideally I like to use a three and a half or four ounce lead. By using the correct lead size, I can compress the rod efficiently and effectively, and the setup remains balanced. Another simple and small change you can make is to lower your hook bait size, such as changing from a 15 mil pop-up to 12 mil pop-up, because this is going to create less drag during the cast. By adding these changes to your casting, you should see instant results. Hopefully you'll be able to implement some of these tips into your own fishing, and fingers crossed it'll put a few more fish on the bank for you.